Welcome to Tree of Knowledge. Many tasks that we do on a daily basis requires us to use both hands independently, tying our shoes, using a fork and knife, even opening a door. These are all pretty trivial. Some tasks, however, prove to be a bit tricky. Rubbing our stomach while patting our head is a classic example. Drawing a circle with one hand and a square with the other is almost impossible to do. For many of us, when we attempt to perform non-trivial movements separately with each hand, our hands either tend to get stuck or not do exactly what we want them to do. This phenomenon is called bimanual interference. Now, some types of complex movements become easier to do with practice. Playing a sport or playing an instrument requires us to use both hands to perform separate movements at the same time. Now, in those cases, many repetitions and iterations are required to form the requisite neural pathways to the point where, for instance, playing a Beethoven piano concerto becomes second nature. But there are seemingly simple tasks which still present challenges to us, and repetition doesn't always do the trick. Try this. Take both hands in front of you and rotate them in the same direction at the same time. You can reverse direction. Easy enough. But now try rotating your hands in opposite directions. Now some of you were probably able to do this without a problem, however I'm betting some of you struggled at least a little bit. Your hands may have gotten stuck at a certain point, or maybe both hands ended up rotating the same way, even when you were trying really hard to make them go in opposite directions. It can be pretty frustrating if you can't do it after the first few attempts. If you fall into that category, don't worry, I'll show you a simple trick at the end of the video that will have you getting it down in no time. But first, why does bimanual interference occur at all? Is it a fundamental limitation of the motor cortex? Are there simply some movements that we cannot do? Or is the phenomenon rooted in cognition, how we think about and plan a motion before executing it? And if the latter, what are some ways that we can use to overcome it? Now, many motor coordination studies demonstrate that the motor cortex favors co-activation of similar muscle groups when both limbs are activated simultaneously. Mirror symmetric motions are easier to perform than asymmetric ones. The same muscle groups from both limbs are activated at the same time, requiring only one set of instructions from the motor cortex. This is why it's easier to rotate your hands in the same direction than in opposite ones. In 2001, researchers had subjects rotate cranks in a symmetrical manner in the plane, one hand clockwise and the other hand counterclockwise at the same time. Subjects had to rotate the cranks in a 4-3 ratio, four turns of the left hand for every three turns of the right. It's pretty tricky to do if you haven't practiced that type of movement before, and as expected, many of the subjects exhibited by manual interference. However, when test subjects coupled their movements to visual feedback, the movements became a lot easier to perform. In another version of the experiment, the cranks rotated a disc with a flag painted on the edge, except the gear of the left crank was adjusted such that four turns of the crank resulted in just three rotations of the flag. When subjects were told to rotate both flags at the same speed, their hands rotated in a 4-3 ratio without a problem. Follow-up studies confirm that a majority of bimanual interference in spatial tasks results from perception and planning of those tasks rather than from any fundamental limitation of the motor cortex. fMRI analysis shows that the same area of the brain becomes activated during bimanual tasks as when subjects are performing a strup test, identifying the color of a word while that word spells out a different color. This indicates that bimanual interference arising from spatial tasks results from how we conceptualize and plan out a movement, Changing how we think about a task, even if the underlying movements are the same, can greatly reduce and even eliminate bimanual interference. But what if we are unable to couple our movements to some sort of visual feedback? What if you're still struggling to get your hands to rotate in opposite directions? Here's what you do. Change how you think about the task. Instead of circles, we'll start off by tracing the edges of a square using static linear movements. Start with both fingers touching. Step one. Extend one hand out while bringing the other hand toward you in a straight line. Step two, lower both hands together. Step three, bring both hands together with fingers touching. Step four, one hand out, the other hand in. Step five, bring both hands up. Step six, bring your hands together again. Repeat the sequence a few times until the movement starts to feel a bit more natural. All you're doing is outlining the template of an imaginary square. When you're ready, you can try merging the steps into one fluid motion while keeping the corners of the square in your mind as mental guideposts. Once you have that down, progressing to a circle shouldn't be too difficult. If not, keep trying. Thanks for tuning in, I hope you learned something new. For my next video, I'll leave you with this riddle. What does Hernando Cortez, the Spanish conquistador who conquered the Aztecs, have in common 
with a peacock. Hint, game theory. Thanks for watching. Stay curious.